Good Wednesday. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful day that the Lord has blessed us with. I wanted to, to continue a thing that we talked about last week when we talked about uh, in, in the book of Psalms, we shared about sickness. And I talked about it being, uh, you, you could use it as a school. One of my uh, favorite preachers of all time, and I think you might agree with me, was Billy Graham. And I want to share with you from Psalms 41, verse 3. And when we look at the life of Billy Graham, Billy was faithful to the end. But Billy experienced a lot of sickness the last several years of his life. But look with me at Psalms 41. It says, The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from their bed of illness. Now, Billy died when he was 99 years old. He hadn't been dead that long. But his last will and testament was made public not so long afterwards. And he said, and I quote in his last will and testament, this is what he said. He says, I ask my children and grandchildren to maintain and defend at all hazards and at any cost of personal sacrifice the blessed doctrine of complete atonement for sin through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ once offered and through that alone. I urge all of you to walk with the Lord in a life of separation from the world and to keep eternal values in view. Then he wrote this. He says, when you read this, this is to his family, I will be safely with Jesus in paradise. I will be awaiting the reunion of our family in heaven. What a wonderful last will and testament to leave your family. Not only did he live it in his life all the way to the end. You know, he had Parkinson's. And if you know anyone that has Parkinson's, it's a terrible disease. Uh, the medications cause a lot of side effects. And it easily distracts you from enjoying life. But even up until almost the end of his life, he still witnessed for the Lord. And he still had personal conversations. Even when he was at the end, he wasn't able to get up and preach in front of a big audience. But he had a lot of personal one-on-one -on -one testimonies. So he was witnessing for the Lord even on his deathbed. You know, no matter what your sicknesses might be, you may be facing something now or in the near future, we can still leave behind a testimony by how we go through it. We can write out, we can video record, just like I'm doing with you today. You know, these new technology, these new phones are just amazing, the quality. We can do selfies. We can also do uh, little videos and talk on them, send messages. But we can joyfully look forward to that glorious day when we will be in paradise. What better message of hope can you leave for your family than to remind them? And when you're gone, that tells them, get in church, get your heart right, and they can go back and listen to it over and over and over to be reminded when they get down and weak and get stressed. You know, when we meet on the golden streets of heaven, we'll have something to talk about. You know, the Lord is preparing a place for us. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you in John 14. His Holy Spirit is with us. Jesus told us, I'm not going to leave you alone. My Father's going to send you the Comforter to strengthen us and sustain us in sickness and in good health. And His blessed Word will prepare us for our eternal habitation. Are you getting prepared for eternity? If you are, what kind of legacy are you leaving for your family, for your friends? What kind of testimony or last will and testament will you leave them? What will they remember you by? Have you ever thought about that? If you leave them a little bit of money, I can assure you it will be gone quickly with the cost of everything, with inflation and the way things go up. 
Billy Graham said, I urge you to read this document, to read and study the scriptures daily, and to trust only in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. He was wise because he knew that Satan and the world would try to tell us there are many ways to heaven. And he was reminding his family and us, just as the scriptures are written for us, that there's only one way. Just put your faith in Jesus Christ because it's easy, it's easy to get distracted today in all the busyness of the world. I want you to understand that's the way the devil works. He gets us distracted and we lose focus if we're not grounded and solid in our faith. So I want to ask you again, are you making sure that you're leaving a legacy, a last will and testament? And that last will and testament should be your life, a living example. Are you in church? Are you praying over your meals when your family's with you? Are you talking about scripture? I don't mean to be pestering them all the time, but kind of sprinkle it into conversations to let them know that you go to scripture for strength and comfort, that you pray when you're down and weak, that you seek wise counsel from godly men and women, and that will leave a legacy to your family, friends, and children and everyone around you to do the same. If you're here today listening to this devotion and you don't have a church family, I want to invite you to come and join us at Proctor Memorial. We'd love to have you worship with us. We do uh, YouTube and Facebook uh, streaming on Sunday mornings at 1030. So if you're not able to physically be with us, you can always join us online to stay connected. Uh, you can download my app, Church Center uh, app. And uh, you can go to my website and see it. It makes it more convenient for you to watch these devotions and stay connected. I want to leave you today, if you would, join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for godly men and women, people like Billy Graham that devoted their lives to proclaiming the good news, even to the very end. And I just pray that you would help each one of us, Father, to be filled with your Holy Spirit and that we too would be living examples as Billy Graham has been for us. Help us to draw closer to you, to use whatever happens in our life to be a testimony of our love and faithfulness and thankfulness for you, Father. For it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you in church this Sunday.